What's up everybody, Wolf of Walmart here. I'm over here at Kayak City yet again, but today we got something new. It ain't a build. It ain't something fancy that I'm gonna mess up. It's just me, Carly, Scott over here. We're gonna talk to you guys about these Hobie kayaks. We got the Outback with the Mega 180 drive and we got the Pro Angler 360. So we're gonna go through these things kind of not necessarily line by line, but highlight by highlight and kind of talk about the differences of the two kayaks and what might benefit you more either you want a faster lower profile kayak to get through bigger waves and i'm not talking about ocean waves because we all got oceans everybody's got an ocean within a thousand miles of them we're talking about you getting out on the water with the wakeboarders with the jet skiers with the guys up on the with their bass boats on plane even the the speedboat guys with the girls with the bikinis bouncing all around like that will kick up water you will be bouncing around it will kick you to the side so if you want a lower profile kayak that might cut through some of those waves better we'll talk about the outback also the stability of the pro angler so we're gonna go through these things like i said highlight by highlight i'm gonna have scott be bouncing ideas off him because he knows more about hobie than i do but i do know a few things and we are going to talk about all of them so here we go first things first not necessarily comes with the hobie but you can get these here at kayak city these delicious kayak cushion seats. I don't know if you guys know about kayak cushion or if you guys are like me and you've beaten your body up over years and years of construction and poor choices, but I'm telling you what, when I sit on the kayak for about mm, eight hours, nine hours, I can get off and I can still walk. I don't have that weird tingly in my legs and I don't have the limp. So if you guys are looking for a little bit more comfort in your ride, we got kayak cushions right here at Kayak City. Come pick yourself up. These are the firm. We also have the soft available. But if you're like me, I suggest the firm. So like I was saying, low profile, we're gonna start with that one first. So this is the Hobie Outback. Now, if you notice the hull design, super flat, super flat. You would think, okay, that's great for tracking. That's good for, you know, calm water. But when you come here and you look at the hull design, and how this hole cuts through the water. That's what's gonna be fighting your big waves. That's gonna be fighting your rough water. That's gonna help you fight the wind a little bit as long as you point your nose in the right direction. That's my problem most of the time, more than other people's. But when I'm coming to, say I'm going to a, a smaller lake, more recreational boaters, but it's got fish. I wanna fish. I wanna jump on my kayak. I wanna get out there. I'm definitely gonna start looking here towards the Outback. The reason why I'm gonna look for the Outback, not only because of the recreation boat and the waves, this boat is fast. This boat is quick. This boat gets through the water insanely faster than larger, wider holes. So I'm always going to be looking for speed and easy direction. I'm looking at this Outback 180. Let's get into the drive. All right, guys. One of the things I really like about this Mega 180 drive in these Outbacks, the release is so just user friendly. I could be sitting up there in the seat where you guys are sitting right now. I could be standing off the side of the boat, which I am like loading and unloading. Two clips back, one on either side. I mean, and look, they're back, they're, they're unlocked. They're in the unlock position. I grab my drive, out it goes. They automatically click right back into the lock position because of the spring lock action that Hobie installed in this thing and lock back into place ready to go. I mean, it is that easy. It is two little switches back in. I just did it not looking. That's basically what we're looking for here is accessibility and ease of use. All right. That's the ins and outs basically of the pedal drive coming in and out. Now, the cool thing is the reverse, the automatic reverse, or not automatic, but the quick pull reverse and quick pull back to forward. So say you're just pedaling away and all of a sudden, rock out of nowhere. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Well, I take this reverse. It actually says reverse right here and I pull it back. Boom. Engaged. And now I'm immediately back paddling. It's brakes like that. It's just a pull of a brake. Now, the cool thing is Hobie saw the operator error ahead of time. And what they did was they tied in this little loop right here to this hatch. So these actually, you can put them through the loop because what a lot of people have been doing is instead of pulling towards themselves, they've been pulling up, which ends up breaking the drive. So back to pedaling forward again, super easy. Pull it right through that loop right there. I mean, after a couple years of people breaking stuff, I'm sure you're gonna come up with a design that would fix it. And this is definitely one of those things. And I, I appreciate it because I am captain operator error. While we're up here in the bow, let's start talking about a few other things. Hobie has a lot of quick grab stuff right here. I have a rudder. I pull this. The rudder comes up, 
I have locking teeth. Locking teeth right here that locks that cord in. So if I want to drop the rudder, all I do is pull out the teeth, rudder's back down. I'm tracking again, no problem. Now, the second string they got over here, transducer. This is what we're gonna get into next. I really like this. I'm gonna pull this now, but it's the same idea. Leave it right there. The transducer actually raises into the hole. Hobie in both the Outback and the Pro Angler have drop plates in, designed in their hole for your transducer. So say you're like me and you like to get really shallow. Well, the first thing you're gonna wanna do Either pop these out, even though they have the full kickback technology here, so I could run into a rock and they'll just kick back and lock right there, that's fine. Or, if it's not super shallow, kick your legs both directions right here. And what'll happen is both of your fins will whoop, go right up against the top, underside of your hole. But you're still not projecting your transducer. Hobie fixed it. This transducer lever right here, you pull this in, the transducer plate sucks right up into the hole, totally protects your transducer. Let's show you how that works. So, my cord for my transducer is pulled right here in the hole like I was showing you. That actually runs through the hole up to here to this plate and this is where you can adjust this transducer mount as needed or repair if damaged. My transducer is totally sucked up into my hull right now. As you can see, we have a large transducer on the bottom of this. So it is now completely sucked up. I could run my hand. I'm not even coming anywhere near that transducer. It's gotta be at least a quarter inch inside that hole. Transducer is now back down out of the hole. As you can see, transducer is down. Ready to you, as you would call, transduce information to my graph. If you don't like the depth of your transducer at any given time, my transducer's down, I can get all my imaging. Like I said, pop this screw, pull this panel open. There's tie wires and screws, everything you can do to adjust that transducer to the proper depth that you would want it. Talking about this transducer right here, I don't know if you guys noticed, the chair had to be removed to get to the transducer. Let's talk about these chairs for a minute before I show you how easy it is to get out. Hobie has got all kinds of technology in their chairs. I'm talking, we even got automatic lumbar support right here. So I can pop this out, release the lumbar, pop it back in. Boom, I have lower back support. Now I like the, the cush bar from Kayak Cushion, but at the same time, this just adds that little bit of extra tension that I'm looking for. So, as we're saying, the technology about this chair, we got this thing called kickstand right here. Now this kickstand actually drops these levers back so I can drop my seat into my kayak so I'm actually sitting lower. The only reason, why would you ever wanna sit lower? Well, when the water gets rough, you wanna get as low to the boat as possible at all times. So, I pull the kickstand lever right here. Those feet drop. My seat is now inside my boat. Now, you're like, oh, that's a fun, fancy way of doing it. That's a little bit awkward, Dave, that I'm sitting that far back in the chair. Well, let me show you. It gets real simple. Like I'm saying, the seat is leaned all the way back. You are basically in a recliner at this point. It's comfortable, but we're trying to get low, so not safe. There is a slip lever inside this seat. So what do I do? I release the front. I take this slip lever right here, slide it out, twist, twist, twist. There we go, all the way down. Pop the seat back in. Stands out. My seat is now low and flat. I mean, that's a lot of technology for just a seat, but it doesn't stop there. It gets really cool. There it is. All right, cool. Like I was saying about the extra technology that comes in the seat. Here's where it gets really fun. I'm tired, I've been kayaking all day. I wanna put everything away, but I need either a sandwich, maybe a frosty beverage of some sort, or just, you know, have family things to get to. Well, Hobie has come out with these awesome little seat legs, come right on the bottom of this Outback seat. 
They almost literally snap right into place. Each one has a peg and a groove. Goes right in. Peg, groove. And now I can have my frosty bed, my sandwich, my little puppy time maybe. A little puppy love. Or just if I'm at my son's baseball game and, you know, the bleachers, they get uncomfortable. Why not bring my seat with me? So that's the seat feature for the Hobie Outback. This is an amazing kite. So let's get into the 180. Let's get into the whole directional drive. Let's talk about this. For the Outback, it's super rad. They have these handles right here, but not just one, but two. And so when I turn this one, see the other one turning too? Yeah. So it doesn't matter what hand you have a rod in, you can turn your kayak, you can adjust. Or if you're busy, maybe you are frosty bevving yourself right then and you just need to make a quick turn. Well, you don't need two hands to hold your bev. So you have the option of turning your kayak from either direction. So the Hobie Outback has this amazing adjustable rudder. I mean, this thing is big, dude. A lot of, a lot of brands out there, they have rudders on their kayaks, but then there's companies like um, oh, Burley Pro that will have an uh, alternate rudder, something that's a little bit more durable. Well, I don't think you're gonna necessarily have to do that with these Hobies. These rudders are stout. They're thick, they're beat up, and they're ready to go. So when I turn it, I can get 180 degrees by minimal to no effort at all whatsoever. That gives me my 180 for my turning capabilities on the Outback. Now, say, like we're talking about earlier, we're getting into shallow water. Again, the whole design comes with this almost pre-built skag style. So that keeps me tracking if I need to drop or pull up my rudder. Now it's not tracking as well as with the rudder. Hi, baby. Here, there's a dog butt for you. <laughs> it's not as tracking as well with the rudder, but it still does track. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys back up here with me. We're up top, let's talk about this. How easily accessible is this? Well, I'm gonna say that this rudder cable is roughly 30 inches from the front of your seat. So unless you have little T-Rex arms, and even then you might just have to lean forward, you shouldn't have a problem reaching up Rudder's up. You are shallow water ready. And that rudder is actually planing with the hull. So your hull will catch most of the debris that you're going to be floating across it, floating across or floating on top of before your rudder ever gets snagged. Super easy. Like I said before, pull it out. Rudder's back down. I mean, it is that easy. And the effort that I have to put in to do all this stuff with Hobie, which is really good, because I've worked with some other stuff and I've played around with a bunch of stuff and sometimes there's a pull lever or there's a you have to really turn you have to use a lot of extra strength with this it is user friendly I feel like I could be doing this into my late 70s early 80s I could still be pulling these cords turning my rudder minimal effort needed Hobie good on you also while we're talking about it because you have a pedal drive unless it fails Rare occasion of that happening lately. Um, they give you this strap paddle holder all along with every Hobie purchase comes a Hobie paddle. They're not a bad quality paddle either. Not gonna lie, it's pretty light, it's pretty easy and it's built specifically for said kayak. So unless you are seven, three and 400 pounds, I think sitting in this Outback, that paddle's gonna do you just fine. Now we're gonna get into a couple odds and ends, little, little things that um, Hobie's doing that I don't see too many other brands doing right now. Hobie is really big on the A-Trail. So they have, you know, say on the, the Pro Angler, we have an A-Trail. Well, on the Outback, we have a small amount of A-Trail as well. But inside that A-Trail, they put track mounts. So let me see, use this as an example. I can track mount just about anything. You can cross brace, all sorts of stuff. You could run a piece of track by T-bolting here. Um, the plastic track on the exteriors. Kayak City's already got this thing hooked up. I mean, we got the Lorentz hook reveal set. Uh, what is this, the seven? Yeah, it's the seven. So you get a seven inch screen and transducer with this kayak ready to go. That's a pretty sweet deal. Um, 
but the Hobie comes with pre-built through hole mounting kits for all your wiring needs on both sides. So it doesn't matter what side you want your electronics because Hobie has already pre-wired or pre-kitted it up for your wiring. So right here, we just got a rod holder, even though Hobie has one, two, three, four rod holders. There's four rod holders already built into the hole. They added an extra right here just to show the build. Let's come through to the front hole access right here, the bow storage. It's watertight. I'm not gonna say waterproof because I haven't spent the night in there in the rain. But I will tell you that there is ample space, ample space in this Outback for just about anything you want, whether it's a dry bag or extra batteries or whatever. Right here at Kayak City, they got you hooked up with the Yak Power System for your whole boat right here. They got this whole wall, everything. They set that up here on the spot for you. You get a, you get a kayak, you order it how you want it, show up, it'll be done. For a smaller kayak, I mean smaller, smaller is relative. This is almost 13 feet long. But for a more narrow designed kayak, I will say that that is a ton of front hole storage in the bow. Now we come to the middle, which is, these are some of the little things that I see in the Hobies that I wish I saw in other kayak brands. Um, this right here, this is at your feet access. Right here, we got a nice little area for tackle storage, lunch, frosty bevs with some ice. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah, buddy, we can get them all in here. Now, if you don't wanna use that storage for tackle or anything else, and you want extra storage for power, batteries, anything extra, this thing comes right out and oh look, they got batteries already in there. That's batteries for the lighting system that you saw earlier. So it comes with a little front pouch holster that you can put just about anything in this. This is just ample storage, I love it. And the same thing with the sides, right here in the inside of the gunnel, you have ample storage for tackle boxes. That's what actually some of these zip cords are for, right? So this comes across right here and you can throw your Plano right here it's not going anywhere. You can double stack them because you got another one right here. These right here, these are easy access for say pliers. Now, why would I want to strap my pliers to that when I have perfectly good plier holes right here? I don't know about you, but I've dropped a set of pliers and they don't float. So you might as well strap an, uh, a quick ring on them and strap it right to your boat. That way they are strapped right here. Your tools are ready to rock at all times. I think in accessibility and maneuverability, speed, and comfort of design, I'm really liking this Outback. I really think that this is gonna be great, especially not only for just flat, calm water, but when the water gets crazy, I'm feeling like the Outback is gonna have the more advanced edge than most other kayaks right now for that kind of water. Scott, do you think I missed anything? Um, just did the, the, uh, the tray in, in the center console. It's nice when you get home if you want to just take, take it in, throw it in the dishwasher, clean it up, it makes it really, really nice to clean up. And, and, and then, the boat is an overall, overall good boat for about everything. It's a really versatile boat that, that, that just goes goes well with everything. So that's 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 coming from the boss. He knows what he's talking about. So when it comes to this kayak, if you're looking for a good boat this summer and you want to get moving, come check you out in Outback. Next up, what do you think's next up? The ball? The ball? You want your ball? Well, I'm going to talk about this 360. Next up, we got the. Hobie PA with the 360 drive. This thing is insane. Now I know there's a lot of kayaks out there. They come out, they come out plastic boats with a seat and it's up to you to do the details. Well, when it comes to details and it comes to accessories, this PA out the factory comes built. Now, the cool thing is over here at Kayak City, they take these boats and they upgrade all sorts of stuff. So we got the Humminbird right here, the Helix 7. That's no joke. We got the Yak Power System already wired up. So at any given time, I mean, I'm just gonna give you a little demo real quick, just so you can see, nav lights, everything. Everything's ready to rock, wired in, batteries in. They do that here for you. You don't gotta worry about it at home unless you're like me and a dummy and you just wanna you know, stumble your way through everything. When I talk about features, this is what I'm talking about. So I have the cable pulley system like I did with the Outback, right? This one comes a little bit different though and it's a lot more advanced. So yeah, I mean right here, 
Boom, see it, transducer, transducer plate. I pull this cord. My transducer drop plate, boom. That's a nice, Helix has a nice transducer, dude. What? Uh, anyways, so that's the plate. Completely waterproof, separate compartment, so you're not gonna be worrying about water getting inside your boat. I didn't discuss that with the Outback, but it's the same thing. Plate is up, transducer is unavailable to be hit. Drop that cord down like this. That was the skeg. <laughs> Here's the transducer. I dropped the transducer down like this. Transducer is down and transducing. So y'all notice my mistake. I pulled what's called the skeg. I already have it pulled out to show you guys. This is the skeg feature. This is a skeg feature that goes on the PA. So when you're in a wider body boat or like me, and you want a wider body boat because I like wider body boats. Only reason being is I'm deathly afraid of the water. So I feel like the more surface area I have, the better off I am. That might not necessarily be true, but that's the way my scared brain works. The Outback's cutting through the water. The PA still has a great hole design for cutting through the water, but sometimes with this wider body boats, you hit a big wave or a couple big waves or some rollers, especially from say wakeboarders, Mick, your rudder might actually exit the water as you're doing this. Now you're losing tracking. You're not tracking anymore. Your rudder's out of the water. You're pointed down. It's very easy for you to skate on that roller. What Hobie did was they installed this skeg. Right now I have it pulled up so you guys can see. Rudder. That is the back end of the Hobie. Now, like I said, your boat might end up out of the water at some point. And I'm not talking about for a fun time. I'm talking about for a wild ride. So I release the skeg, drop the skeg down. The skeg is centered back towards more to the center of the boat, which will help you track in high roll water, heavy winds, currents, just about everything that you can think of where your boat's gonna be skitter scattering like a leaf on the water that your rudder can't handle. That skeg is there to take care of that business. That is an awesome feature that the PA has. And I feel a lot safer with that thing on there if I'm on one of these things. We're still on the big water topic. So now we've talked about the skeg, getting in big water, you're, you're up high. This, this seat is no joke. This is a very tall seat. There's plenty of storage options under here. In fact, the seat is completely removable and they have pads here. If you just wanna stand in this thing, you can totally remove this seat. You can, well, you can remove the seat of any kayak, but you can remove the seat and it's built with the traction pads right here. So you can just stand. Like I seen that lady, on the internet, Christine Fisher, she dances all over these kayaks. I don't know how she does it. She must weigh like 80 pounds and just runs up and down the kayak. It's nuts. This, that feature I could see removing the seat, that this would benefit her way better than it would ever benefit my chunky butt. So we're going to that kickstand feature that we had in the Outback. The PA also has the kickstand, but instead of the kickstand being on the chair, it's actually on the boat. So the chair is freestanding on its own. See those kickstand levers back there? So now, just like the uh, Outback, my seat is tilted back. We're trying to stay in big water, we're trying to stay low. Right here, when you are sitting in the seat, is a whole lot easier than standing over, but when you're sitting in this seat, the handle itself, it has directions, but the handle itself right here, you can turn to release and lower your seat. Like I said, it's easier to do when you're sitting, but I just dropped my seat six inches or more. Now, six inches, when you're on top of this boat in the water, six inches is a lot. Yeah, that's what she said. Or no, she didn't. <laughs> uh, but point being is now my seat is completely flat. I am now almost inside the hull of my boat. I am tech low to my boat. I am ready to travel over big water, heavy water, high winds, current, you name it. I am in the right seating position. The great thing about both of these Hobie boats is these adjustable seats. They go up, they go down, they tilt back, they tilt forward. Everything's adjustable on them, but the seat does not track forward to back. Hobie designed these seats this way to keep your body in the center weight of the boat. You are no longer changing the leverage of the boat. 
Also, the 180 and the 360 drive, I didn't talk about this in the 180, but I'm gonna talk about it now, have gauges. So you can actually bring the pedals to you instead of bringing your seat to the pedals. Again, keeping an even buoyancy in your boat at all times. So I think that is the bee's knees when it comes to design. The last thing I wanna do is go too far back and be back there with my motor and my nose is up out of the water and my kayak now if I go to lean is just gonna roll. I am center, I am sitting, ready to go. Let's talk about some more accessories before we get into this 360. Features, 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 like I was saying earlier. So you remember those tuck packs that we were talking about here in the, in the Outback? The Pro Angler has them too. They have them right here, tucked back right back where you would need them, right next to your seat. Because not only with this larger seat do you have all that under storage, but you have these pouches right here to go ahead and grab, and they move the track mounts forward a little bit in the boat. Why do they move the track mounts forward? Because the PA is not really set up to be a track mount of boat. It does have track where you can use as many track options as you want. It is an H rail system, like we were talking about earlier. So everything will be mounting to these rails. Say these rod racks. Why would you mount your rod racks right here? Well, because the PA has spouts right here for you to go ahead and stick your rods there. Completely capped tubes. You stick your rod down there. It goes right out the bow of the boat and it sits inside the bow safe as sound. You have your rods right here below your gunnel. So your rods aren't in your way at any given time unless you are, you know, trying to crawl around on the, on the boat like a baby. They won't be in the way. They're not in front of your feet. They're not in between your legs. They're not hanging up in front of your face. They are tucked down and away right in front of you with the real seat in the back so you can grab, slide your rod out, make a cast. Pretty accessible to me. So we got those on both sides because we have rod tubes on both sides of this boat. Now, cup holder, it's a fancy feature. I just think it's cool. I like cup holder. If we have established one thing today, I've definitely talked about having Bev's. And Moving forward, the next feature. I like this thing, just like I liked it in the Outback. The PA did it and they upgraded it. So no longer am I gonna have a lunch tote. You can get a lunch tote adapter to fit this, or tackle tote, if you will. But they actually have tackle racks in here for 3,600 boxes ready to go. These boxes by Flambo actually come with the boat, which is <laughs> Yet another perk of getting one of these things is you get free tackle boxes. Now, say I don't want my tackle there. Say I don't want that, I want my lunch tote. It is a very simple lift and pull out. I mean, extremely easy. Right there, they already have the yak power, power mounted. You can fit batteries, you can fit lunches, you can fit just about anything you want inside the bottom of this boat, ready to go. Yeah, more Frosty Bevs. Tons of, my man, Frosty Bevs for life. You could, you could probably, if you wanted to, technically, you could probably block off and seal the whole thing and just throw a bunch of ice in there and just have a blast. But I didn't tell you that, or I am telling you that it is recorded. So now that you hear that, you can say Dave said it, and then, you know, the ranger will do what the ranger does. But they do have the yak power system in here. I know I showed you the, the lights earlier in the video. Everything's fully wired and ready to go. They got batteries and everything inside these boats. So if you're looking for one, and you're not looking to build it yourself or you don't exactly know what you need straight out the gate, they already have them pre-built for you. So you don't even have to say, hey, I want this or I want that. It's ready to go. I mean, you got the Helix 7, you got the Yak power system, the batteries, the nav lights. Really, the only thing you need is you and your rods, and you're ready to go, and some Frosty Bevs. Now, the Outback had the four vertical rod holders. The PA has the four horizontal rod holders. Also, if you want, it has two vertical rod holders already built in. So right now, instead of four rods out the gate, you're running six rods right out the gate, right out the factory, no, adjust, no additions whatsoever. There's also some rear hole storage here. Back here, you can put batteries, you can put, again, wiring kits, anything adjustment here. Say you ever wanted to do a motor, you have the apply, uh, applicable plate right here. That's not where you mount your motor, you mount your motor to the boat on a motor mount, but that's where you can get your wiring and everything else. This is also, the access hatch for your rudder. So if you wanted to change the cabling system out from turning your rudder to turning your motor, that would probably be coming through this plate right here. We have all this storage. We have all this awesome seat and 
and, and transducer lifts and, and skags and rudders. We got everything. Oh, forgot. Bow storage. You want to talk about some storage? You thought that was a lot in the Outback? Dude, here's the PA. Not all, Hey, it's our Frosty Bev's bucket. <laughs> Frosty Bev's bucket. You can remove it. You thought that Outback had a lot of storage? I can stick my whole iPad down in here and you guys can take a look. I mean, you got everything in here. You got the knuckle battery wired up for the lights. These are actually your rod tubes right here. So that's what your rod is actually inside. So it's fully protected in your hole, like I said earlier. That's kind of cool. You can just see it from right here. And of course, most important, dry storage for your clothes, gear, anything, etc., car keys, whatever you don't feel like getting wet, that goes right in there. Now, this lid fits really tight. This lid fits extremely tight, and I like that. That tells me that water's not just gonna get in there. It is very difficult, not very difficult, but pretty difficult to get down. So you know that that is sealed when you're in there. So dry storage, for sure dry. Now it's time for the big shebang. One more thing, one more thing I absolutely forgot. So, well, actually two more things. We're gonna get into this 360 drive right now, but before we get into the 360 drive, like I said, we got transducer, we got rudder. Those are on your right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you have your kickstand, you have your skag. What is this? This is my rudder tension knob. When you are actually turning, again, the dual handle side, so see how the other handle's turning? That's right. That's my dual action rod, or rod in one hand, steering in the other hand handle for the rudder. Say my rudder's not acting right, or it's feeling weird, or there's heavy resistance in the water, lots of weeds, I can adjust my rudder tension knob down here. There's a lot more science to that than I could ever give you. That is my dumbed down new guy version. 360 drive, I mean, look at this thing. This thing is so awesome. How did I do that? How did I make that dial turn straight? Well, the best part about the 360 drive, it is completely hands-free. So say you're cruising along the bank, you got a fish, you got a fish in the boat, you're trying to put them, trying to get them all measured out, you're trying to get your camera photos, you're trying to turn it into Tourney X for your Yakabass tournament, because I know you're gonna be there, and if you're not, you should be. I got a 360 drive. Yes, this has a dual handle on the left side. So this is key. It, the 360 is only on the left side. The 360 handle right here We'll turn, watch this dial right down here, guys. I turn this 360 handle, and I am now turning the actual fins. So I have a fish in the boat. I'm trying to take my photos for my Yakabass tournament, and the wind is about to blow me into a bank. What am I supposed to do? I turn my 360 handle away from the bank and start paddling. No longer am I paddling forwards or backwards. It has nothing to do with the rudder head. It has everything to do with the 360 drive itself. will actually turn and pedal you in a parallel away from the bank. That alone, that alone sells me on a 360. Just being able to get myself out of a hands, almost, almost completely hands-free, sticky situation, the 360 handle for the 360 drive. Let's get into this thing a little bit more because these things get crazy. Hobie created, well, didn't create a bungee. They added a bungee. They, it's hard mounted to the hole. This bungee is made to grab your pedal, clip it tight. You're about to go through some rapids. You're about to go have some fun. You don't feel like pulling your 360 drive out because you feel like you're going to be safe. This rope straps these pedals right here and holds them in a position where it completely keeps your paddles flat up against your hull. So it completely keeps them safe and out of the way. Yes, it has the kick technology, I'll show you that, where you can kick the pedal and it can totally lock it, it can totally kick up and come back, won't break your pedal. But this right here, for when you're coasting and cruising and you don't really wanna be kick, 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 say you had a motor. This is perfect. You just strap your 360 drive down, boom. You'd be cruising in no time. So like I showed you right here with this 360 drive, I am turning this dial. Notice this other lock, or this lock that says pull to lock. Well, say I'm steering and I accidentally hit my 360 drive, now I'm all over the place, right? I'm squirrely as can be, like a tractor with four turning tires. Well, I pull this lock, because I only want to go straight or drive with my rudder. So now my 360 handle is locked in place. My 360 is not going to turn. So you put this pull lock on, 
in your 360s track straight. I mean, you could lock it to the side if you wanted. I don't know why you would, but you could always lock it to the side. So when you want to unlock it, I mean, one finger push, super easily accessible. I turn my 360 drive handle and my 360 drive is now doing a full 360. Full 360. Let me show you how that looks like when it's paddling. You can turn it this way, you can turn it that way. I can do whatever, I can turn it all the way around backwards. Hey, now I'm pedaling in reverse. You guys wanna know about those reverse strings? Don't need them with this one, I just turn the 360 backwards and I'm good to go. Like I said, almost completely hands-free, easy 360 motion in this kayak at any given time. You wanna stay in track straight, you pull the lock out. You wanna go free, push the lock down. Let's get into how easy this is to get in and out. So, we talked about the Outback with the two switches that you know, pop the 360 drive or the 180 drive because they have the, the Mirage drive over there. It's the Mirage 180. This is the 360 drive. So we talked about the two tabs that pop and unlock. This one in the PA is a, built a little bit more stout. The reason why it's more stout, if we haven't talked about all the details yet, I'm pretty sure you would understand why they're going to over-engineer this one a little bit more. So instead of having two locking clips on the side, there's this pull tab right here at the bottom of the screen. Let's see if I can, yep, this pull tab right here. You pull this back, it's spring locked. So when I pull this back, I'm going to pull this 360 drive straight up and out. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I pull this back and I lift up the 360 drive, out it comes. You saw a little bit of struggle there, it's cause my left hand isn't very strong. The cool thing is the way that clip is managed, I don't have to clip anything back just like the Mirage 180 with the Outback 180. Boom, that's it. It's back in, it's clicked in, it's locked in. I'm ready to start paddling. Also, when we're on this 360, we might as well talk about these a little bit. See these little numbers right here? These little, these numbers right here? It's because the seat doesn't move. So this is for your leg length. Pull the release lever, slide it to whatever fits your leg. This little release pin right here. Boop, and you can adjust it. But once it's in, it's not going anywhere. So you don't ever have to worry about your pedal slipping while you're kicking and while you're paddling, all of a sudden one goes way out. Nope, that little lock pin locks you in. You're good to go. So all in all, both kayaks are wonderful for all types of water, all types of, whether it's fishing or boating, wreck boating, whatever you want to do. If you just want to paddle around, Cool, paddle it. It also comes with a paddle just like the Outback. I would not suggest paddling a pedal kayak. Pedal, it's so much nicer. It's so much easier. Hands-free, you know, doing your Miss America, whatever you wanna do, you can just cruise right down the water, right down the lake, right down the river, whatever you feel like doing, both of these boats handle it. They're designed a little bit differently. There's perks on both sides. I'm gonna show you something real quick, just so you can kind of understand. I have a little port right here. Yes, we talked about all the built-in wiring. We talked about all the other features. This little guy right here, what does this guy do? This message goes out to all you husbands, all you fathers, wives, mothers. If you are just neck deep in kayak fishing and you're just ate up by it like myself, and you have a significant other that is not, but they wanna go out on the water with you. Like they wanna be out there with you. Well, you, chances are you're probably not gonna double stack them in the boat. There, there is two-seater kayaks, two-seater pedal drives, Hobie makes them, you can, you can get. If they're anything like my experience is you're out in the sun all day, you're fishing, you're having a good time. They wanna be with you. They wanna enjoy that with you. They don't necessarily like fishing. Hobie got you covered for sure. May I introduce the sail? This actually mounts right in that port, both on the Outback and the Pro Angler. Clips right down here. I mean, it's not heavy tension, but it is a sunshade. It is wonderful. Seeing as you're not paddling, it's not gonna obstruct you up top. They're not fishing, they're out there enjoying the water with you. They can sit right under a sunshade. Once they get two burn, the whole thing folds up, goes right in your hole, you are ready to go. That is the perfect addition for the significant other or child that wants to come out on the water with you, but doesn't want to necessarily be fishing. Boom. 
you now have a perfectly good relaxed spot. Now, if you are like myself, like we've talked about in the umpteenth time, Frosty Bevs, it's always good to have a cold Bev with you. What better than have a cold Bev under a shade? So at the end of the day, if you really want to and you want to bring it out with you, you can pop up a tent and you can chill just as well. The texture, it's water resistant. So say you are out on the water and it starts to rain. Fishing poles or lightning rods, don't be out on the water when it starts to rain. But if you are and it is raining and you want to get back and you're bummed and you're mad and you don't feel like fishing anymore because you don't like fishing in the rain, I don't know who doesn't like fishing in the rain, but the people who don't, you can always pop that thing up too just to keep yourself a little bit more dry on the way back. Hobie just has pretty much thought of just about everything. I mean, mind you, mind having the boat pedal for you, they have got just about every feature between these two boats you could ever need. So if you are in the area or are you interested in Hobie, you can check it out, kayakcity.com, or you're in the area, the Sacramento area, the Northern California area, the California area. Come on down Kayak City right here in Citrus Heights. They got you covered. If you don't believe me about what they got going on, these are just some standard builds, just some basics, just the basics, just to get you out there. Here's an Outback, Outback basic build, little fish finder, threw the Yak Pack on there so you guys could see, Yak Pack compatible, everything fits. This is somebody's custom build that they're having done here. I mean, I'm talking, we got motors, we got battery, we got throttles, everything. If you need anything, they got you covered down here. They can do it here for you in the shop. Stop on by, take a look, have a conversation. You got Troy, you got Eric, you got James, you got Scott. You got anybody, they're here. They're willing to answer your questions and run you through it. They'll talk you through everything that you would ever need on top of these things. Not that you really need much because Hobie pretty much has it built out for you. Whatever your little heart's desire, whatever your little brain can dream up, they can get you covered down here at Kayak City. Come check it out.